colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com. Hello fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Ungil Zalalem, bringing you this report. Today I want us to talk about the EU-AU Summit. It has been going on uh, for the past week and there are a few things I want us to discuss because after that EU-AU Summit, a lot has been happening, especially from the African leaders. Like a lot of minds are being changed and all of a sudden, like the Senegalese leader, uh, Maki Sol is asking the EU to send more troops or, you know, the Niger president telling uh, French troops to come to his country after they were expelled from Mali. Some, something shady is going on. Let me just show you a little bit of the EU-AU summit, how we went, we'll come back and discuss. Thank you for joining us. Previous EU-Africa summits have resulted in many action plans and strategic declarations. It's been 22 years since the first summit was held in Cairo, but little in the bilateral ties have changed for the better. There's a huge imbalance in the EU-Africa trade and economic underdevelopment in Africa. So is a new dawn in the EU-Africa ties on the horizon? The sixth EU-Africa summit began and ended with a promise to reset ties between the two continents and to create a more equal and mutually beneficial relationship. Smiling faces, firm handshakes and eloquent speeches, but Africa and Europe have been there before and we'll be hoping the energy doesn't fade in the weeks and months after the summit. The 150 billion euros investment plan unveiled by the EU chief and the pledge to support vaccine manufacturing in Africa have received applause. But the vaccines come nearly two years late and after a lot of goodwill eroded. But the size and scale of action both parties take to make bilateral trade bigger and fairer will be a factor that will fundamentally reshape ties beyond just speeches. European countries have imported cheap raw materials from Africa and exported to the high-value manufactured products, resulting in trade imbalances and perpetual economic underdevelopment in Africa. As you saw, there's new commitments that are being made and new promises for African nations and how much they're willing to give and what sectors they want to improve in Africa. And we've heard this story uh, again and again and again, and we're not impressed uh, because we all know even when they give out money, it's to really uh, twist our arm or to use it against us if we, you know, say no to what they do demand us to do so yeah especially the younger generation we're really not excited with their promises but what i thought was interesting was the fact that our leaders are starting to really act all friendly and like forget what they have just done in Mali and Burkina Faso and all those countries that we've been discussing this few months and now they are actually not just asking but begging for EU troops to have more presence in Africa. I, I don't get that part. Like, Maki Sol actually said Africa needs EU troops presence. Like, needs. He said needs, fam. This is really um, disappointing. I don't know what they told them behind the scenes during that meeting, but um, it's really not looking good. And we really, really need uh, the youth to educate uh, themselves so that when they are in power in the future, they can at least change some things that the people is complaining about and selling out is not new it has been happening but at this point in time let's just try and do better because if they refuse to 
peacefully transition to the younger generation and allow us to run our countries the way we would like them to be run and the way we want to be respected and make our own decisions for our own countries and you know listen to us when we say we do not want foreign troops in our countries i don't know i don't know what is going to happen in the near future because the leaders are really pushing it and this is a clear example of them being um, detached from reality of the average person in their countries anyways fam let us know down below what your thoughts are about this i am on gilzalalam i'll see you on the next one bye